Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, live from the Daytona Ice Arena here for this ACHA Division III matchup between the visiting University of Miami Hurricanes and the hometown Embry-Riddle Eagles. Welcome to the second semester of play here in the SCHC Conference. And alongside with me here tonight is Jordan Shepard. And Jordan, talk us through what Embry-Riddle needs to do to get themselves into the SCHC playoffs. Well, there, it needs to be a lot different than last year. Last year, we didn't win a single game in the second half of the season. It all starts tonight. Uh, Miami doesn't have their full team here. They also haven't won a game on the road. So they really need to jump on top of that and start the semester off strong. Last semester we started off against Miami, lost both games at home. So the most important part is really having a strong start and not letting it slip away like it did last year. Even though it's been 48 days since Embry-Riddle has had action here at the Daytona Ice Arena for a game, they are eight and three in their last 11, four, seven and one in that first semester in the SCHC in total. And as you said, Jordan, Miami only traveled with eight skaters and a goalie, so a very, very light bench. And Miami's going to get the early possession into the attacking zone. Starting in goal for Embry-Riddle is Max Minervini, a 3-6 record, 2.98 GAA, and a .913 save percentage as Alex Faller comes in for the hard forecheck and forces Colin Fitz, the starting goaltender for Miami, to freeze the puck just 25 seconds into the opening frame. I think Miami is, with such a short bench, they're really just going to run a very passive forecheck, almost like a trap game. Uh, I played on a team, we only had 10 players at the end of the year, and we actually utilized that properly, and it was really successful, and it's all about execution. If Miami can execute, it could be, they could be very successful. Jack Boken, who normally wears number nine, is in the number four jersey tonight. He was the one who had to retreat out into the neutral zone and dump it back in cross corner, and Miami comes out into the neutral zone. Michael D'Antonio gains the red line and dumps it in, takes a hit from Colin Bridges, goes around the boards to the near side. Colin Bridges takes a cross check from behind. That gets the eye of the crowd and of the official. And as Embry-Riddle has possession, Kyle Usiak was looking to skate it through center ice. The referee blew the play dead, and Michael D'Antonio gets the early cross-checking penalty, and Embry-Riddle will go on a power play. This is where Embry-Riddle needs to jump on them early. Miami's penalty kill coming into this game, 53.6%. And the Embry-Riddle power play only 15, just over 15%. But they really need to jump on, on top of this here. Quick face-off win from the Eagles. Near side to Remy Hawtaw. He'll take a shot, deflected, and it's loose in front. And it will be covered up by Colin Fitz, who did not like the extra shove from Noah Austin. And as you just mentioned, Jordan, Embry-Riddle with a 15% power play. And we can sit here all day long. At M Miami University has a 1 in 10 record. That really doesn't mean anything in the SCHC. Even with eight skaters, we've seen Embry-Riddle battle back even from last season to this season, we've seen them improve. This SCHC conference is very, very tight no matter who you're playing against. And it shows on the power play. Embry-Riddle, you said a 15.02 uh, power play. Miami has a 17.02% power play. So Miami's got a better power play. So Embry-Riddle's got to stay out of the box because that's where Miami is going to get most of their chances. As the Eagles set up on their first power play, UCAC up to the far blue line for Bryce Corner. Corner will take the shot, doesn't get through. It was deflected down loose on the far side, and Austin will leave it for Adam Latart. Latart moving to the near side corner. Cycles it back down low for Usiak. He will hold on to it all the way to the far side corner. Still hangs on to it up to the top of the umbrella for Hawtaw. His shot doesn't make it all the way through and comes to the near side. Back up top for Hawtaw. Takes another long shot. Easy pad save as there was no traffic in front. Loose at the high slot. Corner couldn't get a shot off. Cycles to the near blue line for Hawtaw. Another shot. This one goes in and out of the glove of Fitz, and it's cleared all the way down by the Hurricanes with 50 seconds left on the Eagles' first power play. And that was a good first power play most of that time. The, uh, Miami's playing a box. They're not playing a diamond. And Riddle's answering with an umbrella, and that's allowing Noah Austin to stand in front of the net uncontested. A couple good chances on that. Ryan Knapp has minute. his pass deflected, and Turner Kaufman has to retreat to Remy Hawtaw, who has not made a change. He was out on that first power play unit. He's been out there for 90 seconds and he will get that clearing attempt back off the stick of Johnny Amello. Saucer pass finds David Lytle. He's got a skating lane down the left, left side. Shoots into the glove hand of Colin Fitz, and he makes a big glove save 
to preserve a tie game with 17-26 left in the first period. And that was a good pass by Hot Tub, but that really made those passes make make coaches hold their breath because it was a backhand saucer pass in the neutral zone. And if that gets picked off or it's weak, it was a two on one the other way. So it was a good good pass by Hata. Shot gets deflected from Ryan Knapp. It's loose in the crease and skirts to the near side corner. Adrian Debra, his first shift of the second semester. And it's on the man advantage. Backhanded at the blue line by Wyatt Ebner. Finds Kaufman. He'll shoot it off the crossbar and goes to the far side. And a two on two developed for Miami as we're back to full strength. Cutting up into the high slot. Saunders, he'll shoot. Shoulder saved by Minervini. His first action of the night. Shots are already seven to one in favor of the Eagles. Ryan Knapp forces it up the far side wall. Saunders off of that shooting attempt. Tries to dump it to the far corner and it's taken out by Embry-Riddle. David Lytle over the blue line. Forehand to backhand fails and he gives chase on the near side corner below the goal line. Forced up to the half wall and he can't force it into the middle. Hurricanes have possession behind their own net. It's Peter Gurl. He will turn it right over to Turner Kaufman who battles one on two against a pair of green jerseys. As Miami comes in, skating in a left to right attacking motion in their road green uniforms with orange and white trim. And David Campbell is forced to just dump it in. Again, only eight skaters for Miami, so a very short bench, three skaters on the bench. As Matt Silcox comes in, deflected, they score! Jack Boken, the defenseman, gets his 23rd point of the season. And Embry Riddle gets the early 1-0 lead. Well, that's really good to see this fourth line coming through. And that's just a really good heads-up play by Matt Silcox to see that Jack Boken's going to the net. Jack Boken's such a good, smart player. He can really use his speed to get anywhere. Silcox looked like he was going to shoot, and he picked his head up at the right time and made a perfect pass to Boken. He just has to tip that in. No chance for Fitz on that. And taking a look at the point totals for... E for all the individual players for Embry-Riddle. Ryan Marks, the captain, leading Embry-Riddle in points at 24. But you gotta look farther as Boken wants a little bit more, wearing number four, normally wearing number nine. Big collision on the far side corner, a legal hit shoulder to chest. Sent Bishkoff down to the ice, loose in the crease, and it gets sent to the near side corner. Jack Boken, the rookie, the defenseman, now has 23 points, one point behind the veteran Ryan Marks. Good to see that kind of Availability from Jack Boken and a rookie nonetheless on the score sheet. As Miami comes back on the counter attack, Will Redding down the right wing, a backhander, easy pickings right into the bread basket of Minervini, who is looking for his fourth win of the season here tonight. And we've got a lot of hockey left, 15 20 left in period number one. No, Ember Riddle's been really good at really just getting pucks deep and forcing the forecheck. They haven't tried to oversimplify things in their own zone. They're just able to make simple breakout passes, and that's what they're going to need to do. That's what's going to wear Miami down only having eight guys. I'm telling you, after a while, having to go into your own zone and having to chase the puck and getting hit, they're gonna not, not going to want to get hit after a while. Top line out for Embry Riddle. Brantley Miller streaking down the left wing wall. Holds on to it all the way to the far side corner. Backhand saucer finds Bryce corner at the blue line. He'll send it back down low for Bryce, or for Brantley Miller, excuse me. And Ryan Marks patiently sends it up to the blue line for Hawtaw. Has a shooting lane, gets through, and it's wide of the far side post. Back up for corner. Five minutes gone here in the opening period. Embry Riddle leads two to one, or excuse me, one nothing, as these shots are nine to two in favor of Embry Riddle. Now Miller lost the handle at the blue line in a one on two, developing for Ryan Saunders. Saunders cannot get around Remy Hawtaw. Ryan Saunders, the leading point total scorer for University of Miami, comes back in. And a backhander sticked away by Max Minervini. As I was saying, Saunders is the leading point scorer for those Miami players that made the trip. That was a good back check by Marks on Saunders on that partial breakaway. Ryan Saunders with nine points on the season. Isaac Davidson, who did not make the trip, leads the Hurricanes with 15 points as this one is sent all the way down and on a fresh sheet of ice, it will go for an icing call. 14.01 left in period number one, a one nothing <coughs> lead for Embry-Riddle, a 9-3 shot advantage for the home team as well. Well, there were a couple times on that shift where Miami was puck, puck watching and I watched Alex Fowler and Ryan Marks sit on the left hash marks, more left faceoff dot wide open. And I'm thinking that with 
the vision of that first line, they're going to look for that backdoor pass a lot, especially if they're just standing there. Nobody even knows they're there. Face-off win by Miami. They can't get a shot off. Hawtaw did a good job of tying his man up on the far corner, but it comes right back for Will Redding. Redding centering pass deflected away by Ebner, and Ryan Marks comes back through the high slot of his own zone. Patiently through center ice, sends it on goal, and it gets deflected, and instead it goes wide. So now Johnny Amello gaining speed down the left wing, and it bounces over the stick of Ryan Knapp, and icing will be waved off as Peter Gurl won the race to the dots. 13.30 left in the opening period. Adam Latart gains the red line and dumps it in around the, around the boards, near side corner to far. Now Knapp steps in, taking a shot and taking a hit, and the rebound, they score! Noah Austin gives Embry Riddle a two nothing lead as Ryan Knapp took a hit to make the play. Michael D'Antonio from Miami had a chance to get the puck out on the boards, and he didn't do it. And Ryan Knapp just got his head up and threw it to the net, and that puck, I, I don't know who deflected it. I don't know if it was Latar or Uziak, but Austin's going towards the net on that shot, and it ends up right on his stick, and there's no chance for for Fitz on that either. It's a good, good heads-up play by Ryan Knapp. Miami looking to respond before things get too far out of hand. Keith Asplund trying to streak through the slot, lost the handle. And Latart will gain speed down the left wing wall, dumps it off the body of Usiak as the crowd has tons of life here for the first game of the spring semester. It, it is Greek night, so we've got a lot of fans still walking in through the door, and Usiak was looking to pick the corner on the top side on that glove hand, and Colin Fitz had had enough, and he will Freeze that puck for a face-off with 12.48 left in period one. As the game goes on, you know, it, the offensive zone in, for the Eagles is going to be more like a power play. Miami's going to collapse to the middle, and it's really going to be about getting quality shots in that. Miami's going to protect the middle of the ice because it conserves the most energy, and the Eagles are going to have to find a way to get pucks to the net through traffic. Colin Bridges takes a hit, getting it out to the neutral zone for Lytle. Backhands to the far side for Boken. Finds Kaufman off of his skate, and it gets dumped back out into Eagle territory. Boken retreating behind the safety of his own net. He's hooked from behind. That's a penalty against Miami, and the delayed call will be touched up by Will Redding. And so Embry Riddle will go on their second power play of the night. They are 0 for 1. And something I touched on, and you touched on too, Jordan, only a 15% power play against a struggling Miami Hurricanes team. This is where you've got to improve your power play and your special teams when you get the opportunity because you've got difficult opponents coming up. The next two games are in Colorado against Air Force and then at Florida Gulf Coast. Four difficult games on tap for Embry-Riddle. This is where you've got to get your legs back from the holiday break and start honing in those special teams. And this is where, I mean, you can have a struggling power play and you break it down to basics and you get, you throw a puck towards the net, it goes off a skate and it goes in the net. Confidence is big on special teams. It's going to kind of let you a little relax a little bit more at the puck. You know, you could have a penalty killer coming out. You might tense up and throw it away. If you have a little more confidence, you'll take that extra second and look. Hata at the blue line, his shot deflects to the far side corner for Kaufman. Kaufman below the goal line, comes back up towards the half wall. Goes up to the blue line smartly for corner. Corner, back to the far side for Kaufman, back to corner. They play catch, and finally a shot goes into the glove hand of Colin Fitz, who again gives a shot to the man in front. That is David Lytle taking abuse from the blocker hand of Colin Fitz. So Miami is, they're different on this penalty kill. They're, they're running more of a, a box diamond now than just a box, and that's eliminating some opportunities in front of the net for Lytle. Now there's a guy in front of the net with him, and that point, point shot and the shot from the top of the circle is a little more contested. 11.52 left in period one, a face-off win for Embry-Riddle. Still 90 seconds of power play time for the Eagles. Fowler on the right wing circle, up top for, for corner. Shot gets through, rebound is there. Another save is made by Fitz, and the rebound to the far corner for Fowler. Half wall to blue line for Bryce Corner. Has Hata on his left, goes Fowler to the far side. Alex looking in the corner, goes down low for Miller. Back to Fowler on the right wing corner. Up top to the blue line for Bryce, corner again. 
Left-hander takes a shot deflected wide of the near side post, and the referee sets a pick, allowing Ryan Marks to get possession. Up top for corner again. Quarterbacking the power play near side for Hawtaw. Takes the shot blocked in front by Faller, and the rebound drops for Ryan Marks to get it back to Hawtaw. Walking to the middle of the blue line, shot deflected, didn't make it in on goal, and Brantley Miller gets it right back up to the blue line. 45 seconds of power play time still. Far side for Bryce Corner. Walks to the middle of the blue line, setting up the umbrella. Far side for Brantley Miller. He'll take a shot wide of everything, and it comes back up to the blue line for Hawtaw. Hawtaw forces it in down low, and the rebound goes up in the air and stays in play behind the net. Near side corner finds Ryan Marks at the near hash marks. Up to the blue line for Hawtaw again. Shot looking for a deflection, didn't find one. And the Hurricanes are successful in clearing it out. And the four-man unit can only make a three-man line change. That was a good penalty kill for Miami. They did a good job collax collapsing to the front of the net. Eagles were getting shots on net, but they weren't getting any of those rebounds. Stretch pass is deflected in. Brantley Miller on dead legs. We are back to five-on-five five play. Embry-Riddle 0 for 2 on power play chances thus far with 10 minutes remaining in period one. Miami looking for a stretch pass and it is cut off by Wyatt Ebner and a failed dump in allows Silcox to fail on a toe drag and back comes David Campbell. Campbell that is at the left side of the blue line dumps it in for Wyatt Ebner to corral below the goal line. Ebner with lots of space and gaining speed through the neutral zone. Hurricanes just giving him the neutral zone and he takes a shot that's routinely sticked aside by Fitz. That is the 16th shot on goal for Embry-Riddle so far. Wyatt Ebner shot doesn't get through but it gets close enough to Fitz where he's able to cover the loose puck and give his team a much needed line change. Miami has been running a 1-2-4 check and they're really, they're giving up the neutral zone and it's not necessarily an intentional thing but when you're playing a more passive forecheck you tend to get more flat footed in the neutral zone so you're allowing those players to get up to speed on the breakout and really all you can do is contain them once they get into your zone. Two on one for Miami developing David Campbell on the left side shot glove saved by Minervini and the rebound corralled by Wyatt Ebner and it gets turned back over. Ryan Saunders sends it down low only to be given right back to Emory Riddle who dumps it out to the neutral zone. Stolen away by Usiak, a two-on-one developing. Usiak takes the shot, blocker save, rebound is there, and it's blocked in front, rebound, they score! <laughs> Kyle Usiak took the initial shot, and Adam Letarte was there to pick up the loose change. And the whole sequence starts on that two-on-one for Miami. Wyatt Ebner takes away the rebound. He had good he played the shot properly and then he turned around and he cleared the rebound and that's what led to everything starting up. Usiak makes a really good play, shoots for a rebound and Adam Letarte was absolutely robbed on the first shot but he just kept going to the net and that's where you're going to score a lot of goals. In this era of hockey you got to go to the net and get the loose change. Not sure if Colin Fitz made that miraculous save cutting back to his left or if it was the defenseman in behind him that blocked that shot. Either way, doing what the coach tells you to do from U10s and up, go to the net, good things will happen. And Adam Letarte on the second and third opportunity finally banged home the third one of the evening for Embry Riddle as Jack Boken finishes his hit on the play. And oh, wow. Miami's starting to get more and more frustrated. I think that was interference. They got away with the one there. Noah Austin corrals it in the near side corner. Lost the handle on it. And now another set pick play. Does not allow UCAC to get a handle on the four check. Another collision, but Ryan Saunders stays on his feet, maintains possession for the Hurricanes. Near side corner up to the blue line and no one is home. And Miami retreats all the way back to their own end. This game's getting really chippy really fast. And this is where Embry-Riddle needs to settle down and not take too many penalties. You can take one or two as long as they're not those undisciplined penalties. If you're gonna take a penalty, make it a smart penalty negating a goal if there is a, even a, th a thing as a smart penalty in a coach's eyes. Very seldom there are. But stay out of the box as often as possible as David Lytle sends it up the far side for Adrian Debra. Three on two. Debra wow. sends his man to the ice. He got his head up and got his shoulder down. And a collision as Bryce Corner goes into the boards awkwardly. Stays on his feet finally on the second effort. He's knocked off the puck. And Lytle comes out into the slot. Dumps it down low for Kaufman. As the crowd is loving the physicality and chippiness that we're seeing on the ice. 
Kaufman for Deborah behind the net. Saucer pass for Lytle. Can't get a backhand shot off. And Campbell comes back on a toe drag. He is able to get around oh the my. And just nearly a partial breakaway as Hawtaw sends his man to the boards. And Max Minervini will not let the puck go with seven minutes remaining in period one. And Campbell's coming through the neutral zone and Hata and Corner collide and that almost went really, really bad. And he was lucky that the puck went to the boards because that allowed the middle to be taken away by the back checking defenders. This game is getting chippy and, and the refs need to make sure that they're keeping this game under control before it gets out of control. Brantley Miller, left wing wall. Tons of space to the red line, dumps it off of a leg, hits the netting, and we'll have a faceoff out in the neutral zone. 6.48 left in period one, shot 16 to five in favor of Embry Riddle as the faceoff comes out to the center ice circle. And the top line will stay out for Embry Riddle. Ryan Marks, as we mentioned earlier, the leading point scorer through the first semester, wins the faceoff back and Miller dumps it in as he gains the red line. Hits the boards on an eagle bounce and Brantley Miller throws it off the outside of the net for Ryan Marks to handle. Fancy move wow. to get to the center of the ice and gets a shot off right into the logo of Colin Fitz. A creative move from Ryan Marks to get free. And he makes it look easy. He's such, a, such an explosive skater, he's really good on his edges and that allows him to just kind of make moves like that look effortless and he stays up balanced. If I tried anything like that, I'd get knocked down with a slight push. Miami wins the face off in their defensive zone, they rim it hard around the boards. And icing will be waved off, looks like Ryan Knapp won the race to the dots, but referees say play on with 6.18 left in period one. Onside play allows Miami to come back out into the neutral zone and this time Ryan Knapp sends it back where it came from. This one deflected off a ceiling and it will be another face off out in the neutral zone. 6.05 left in period one. Shot total climbing to 17 for the home team. Miami has been pretty good for the amount of bodies they have on the bench and they've still been pretty physical and you know sometimes the chippiness will actually energize you even more and you know you have to be smart Emory Riddle needs to be smart and they need to use that use their chippiness to get them in the box and kill momentum on power plays because that will deflate you really fast and this will go for an icing call against Emory Riddle this was supposed to be the third time these two teams have met Instead, ironically enough, it was a hurricane that stopped Embry-Riddle from playing the Hurricanes in the first set of games that were scheduled. So instead, this is the first time these two teams have met. They have gone, the Hurricanes have instead gone through a few coaching changes since the beginning of the season. And obviously some personnel losses coming in with eight skaters as this shot goes into the glove hand of Colin Fitz. And I talked to one of their players last year about this and the thing is is I don't think they actually come back from the break until next weekend so if you're from out of state and you know you want to get as much time as home at home as you can I don't think a lot of the guys will come back two weeks early to play a game and that's probably the same thing this year Boken walking in from the boards. Toe drag gets into the slot, shoots for the five hole, and it's sticked away by Colin Fitz. And Silcox keeps it alive at the blue line, and it's dumped all the way down in a one-on-one -on -one for Ryan Saunders. Stolen away by Colin Bridges and sends it up the wall. And Billy Callahan, normally number 40, wearing Daniel Sakala's number six. And Colin Bridges retreats into his own zone. Funny story about, I, I got to the rink and Alex Fowler asked me if Dan had his jersey. And next thing you know, Dan's in his locker getting his jersey because Billy needs it. And he's not even the only one. It's the it's those first game jitters back from that holiday break. Two different players for Embry Riddle not having their normal numbers. With 444 left in period number one. And an icing call brings the play all the way down into Embry-Riddle offensive territory. 
with a 3-0 lead in hand. I know it's 3-0, but they need another one. And I think if you can get four, that's really going to put, I don't want to say it'll put the game away because there's still 40 minutes, but it's a lot harder to go into a lock. And there is that goal for Adam Letarte that you were saying they needed. It's a 4-0 lead, and that is Adam Letarte's second goal of the night and his second dirty goal of the night. And good classing move from Adam Letarte. Not a big celebration, not going through the handshake line at the bench. Get that fourth goal, get to the faceoff dot. Second goal from Adam Letarte where he's just pounding away at the front of the net. And that's the kind of player he is. And he came into that new player skate and he was really fast, but he was really gritty. And Bob Joyce and I talked a little bit about, you know, especially the first part of the year, he, he was just kind of getting his feet going. But once he gets going, he's going to be a really dangerous player. And he got going at the end of the semester, and he's just continued it into the new semester here. He's like a little diesel engine. Once you get him going, he just will not stop. One of the smallest players in stature on Embry-Riddle as he gets hooked from behind and still makes the play to the far side. Shot goes off the outside of the net. And you just see him buzzing all over the ice. The little diesel engine that could will start a little bit late in the season, as you said, but once he gets going, he can go for a long, long time, and he will finally go on the bench for a change with 3.58 left in period number one, and an icing call again brings a face-off down into Miami Hurricanes' and defensive he, territory. He's also aggressive. He likes to throw his body, and I don't know how many of the parents or people watching watch the NHL, but he reminds me a lot of the Edmonton Oilers forward, Kyler Yamamoto, he's about the same height, and all he does is just throw his weight around and go to the net, and he's been really successful. Remy Hawtaw is going to get an interference penalty on this. The puck was right behind David Campbell. He didn't get a stick on it as Remy Hawtaw got all of his body on David Campbell. And Cam you know good what? to see Campbell pop right back up, and Hawtaw is going to get two minutes for interference. He's looking at that box for a long time. I don't think he's too happy. It, the thing is, is it was a good hit, but you got to wait that extra second. And as a player, it's just like a, all you want to do is just knock him down, and it's just perfect. And sometimes you just get a little too jumpy. I can relate to that. So see how the those penalty kill does. And the good start to the penalty kill sends the puck all the way down to the far side corner. That is Remy Hawtaw's 42nd and 43rd penalty minute of the season. That ties Jack Boken for the leading penalty minute getter on Embry-Riddle. And that makes Jack Boken and Remy Hawtaw tied for fourth in the most penalty minutes in the SCHE, which is not something you want to be leading the conference in. But nonetheless, it yields a 90% penalty kill for Embry-Riddle against that 17% power play for Miami. And they're not, it, it's funny because they have that stat, because you watch them, they're not dirty players. You know, they're, they're really aggressive, physical defensemen, and sometimes they, their stick gets caught in the feet or something like that. Looking up at the blue line, finds Johnny Amello, walks to the far side for Asplin. He'll get a shot through, pad save, Minervini. He makes the rebound save as well, and he will gather up the rebound with 65 seconds left on the Hurricanes power play. Shot, shot six and seven for the Hurricanes. That's a good job by Ryan Knapp to box his man out in front of the net. Minarmini makes the save and the rebound kind of sits there, but he just throws him off a little bit to where Max can actually get his glove on it and gives him a little love tap after. No hard feelings, I assume. After all, it is just a game, right? Just a game indeed. And Jordan, talk to us. We've only seen seven shots on goal for Miami as this power play gets a little bit more and more traction as a shot gets deflected, not knocked down with a high stick. Talk to us about how few shots on goal you've seen affect how a goalie gets warmed up through a game. Well, the thing is, is it can really throw, you, throw them off and we could play the whole period in their zone and the goalies just kind of stand in there, not necessarily you know, not paying attention, but goalies are also really mental. And if they're not getting some kind of movement, it might throw them off just a tiny bit. So you could have 20, 20 shots in one period and only give up five or six, but sometimes the goalie just kind of gets off a little bit and maybe that shot that they normally save goes in. So in a way they can be deflating for a team, but it can also be really motivating for the team to play 
you know, even better in front of the goalie than they already have. So those games can really come out one way or the other. Centering pass deflected away by the paddle of Minervini, and Silcox throwing his body weight around, hitting a couple of players. And it's taken away by Alec Bishkoff. On the backhand, he gets it out to the neutral zone. We're back to five on five play. Embry Riddle kills off their first penalty kill of the night as Minervini lets it go loose for Colin Bridges. Stretch pass finds Brantley Miller, skating down the left wing wall. Cuts to the net on a backhander, and the net is knocked off of its pegs as Ryan Marks comes in to pick up the rebound. And we'll see where they put this face off. Looked like Brantley Miller ran into Colin Fitz, the goaltender for Miami, knocking the net off, which I believe will keep the face off on the near side circle in Embry-Riddle offensive territory. And to build off what I was moving it out. And I guess they're gonna say that because Brantley Miller forced the goaltender into the net, that's why I and said off. it would most likely keep the face off in, shows you what I know. Well, and sometimes, you know, you can argue the defenseman pushes you into the goalie, or if you just fall into the goalie, you knock the net off, then it comes out. It's really a 50-50 call. 83 seconds left in period one, a 4-0 lead for Embry-Riddle over the Miami Hurricanes. Canes get it up to the far side wall. Girl gets it up to the red line, but not all the way down. Bryce Corner taking a check, getting it into the far side half wall. Miller gives chase, sending his man into the boards, and Miami has a skating lane. Instead, they force it all the way down, and Remy Hawtaw leisurely to the dots, as well as Bryce Corner. A little sneaky play from the defenseman, Remy Hawtaw, not skating necessarily as hard as we've seen him skate, not taking a direct line, but hey, gets the job done for yeah. an icing call. And you know, sometimes the rest will get you for that, so you gotta disguise it really well. And you know, that, that pass where they ice it, it, it's a short bench thing, it's a fatigue thing. You really, you're more just in panic mode. You just want to get the puck out of the zone. You think a little bit quicker, you act a little quicker than you need to. Miami will win the faceoff and get it out to the neutral zone, but that's as far as they get before bringing it in on the second attempt. And Ryan Mark steals the puck back right in front of his own net, and he falls down on the stutter step, maintains possession, and corner sends it to the near side. Up the wall for Miller, touches for speed for Marks. Down the left wing, the right-handed shot fails on the toe drag. Robert McNamara stopping him on the near side. Bodying up Alex Fowler as McNamara again as the puck comes out to the neutral zone. 27 seconds left in the opening frame. Remy Hawtaw near side to far on the dump in. Fowler wow. takes a collision down low. Centering pass skated away, and it comes up for Hawtaw. One timer, he scores! I don't think it was deflected in front, and Remy Hawtaw, I believe, and when I double check, if that is Remy Hawtaw's goal, that is his first in an Embry-Riddle uniform with 13 seconds left at the, in the opening period. I think, I don't know, Turner Coffin said something to the official, so we'll see, we'll find out at the break, but they actually tried to find Brantley. Yeah, it is. It is going to be Remy Hawtaw's goal. Brantley Miller, the assistant captain, comes over to the linesman, asks for the puck. So Remy Hawtaw, congratulations on your first goal in an Eagles uniform, giving Embry-Riddle a 5-0 lead, 13 seconds left in period one. And that will most likely take us into the intermission. But Ryan Saunders has something to say about that. Minervini lost sight of it for a second, didn't know where it was, but it was locked up in his paraphernalia. And we'll have a face-off to the left of the Embry-Riddle netminder. And Max has done a good job this period of staying sharp. They had that penalty kill and he made the saves he needed to make. He's been making the saves. Like we talked about earlier, he's been you know, not getting as much action, but he's still stayed sharp, which has been good, keeping a zero on the board for right now. Shots 21 to 10 in favor of Embry-Riddle. And the eight-man unit of Miami University goes into the locker room trailing by five. Embry-Riddle with a phenomenal start to the spring semester here on Greek night. It was a slow start for this crowd filtering in, but they have filled up this Daytona Ice Arena upper level and lower level down at ice level. And Embry-Riddle playing into the crowd height, and as you, know, you can hear in the background. And it, it's funny because you know, we hear them booing Miami off the ice, but I've talked to some of the players on the faceoff, and they love it also because they love the environment and the atmosphere. Even if you're playing in a road building, having an atmosphere of people cheering, 
either against you or for you can energize you a lot. A 5-0 lead for Embry-Riddle going into the first intermission. Goals coming from Jack Boken, Noah Austin, Remy Hawtaw gets his first of the season. And Adam Latart picks up a pair of back-to-back -back goals. Embry-Riddle 0 for 2 on their power play chances. Miami 0 for 1. And we will be back for the start of period number 2 here shortly here on the Embry-Riddle Eagles Broadcast Network.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, live from the Daytona Ice Arena here for start of period number two between the hometown Embry-Riddle Eagles and the visiting Miami Hurricanes. Nick Gimble alongside Jordan Shepard for the second period of game number one of the spring semester. As you mentioned, Jordan, something that never even occurred to me, University of Miami not even starting classes until next week. So only eight skaters for the men in green and a 5-0 deficit for the Hurricanes, but this is exactly what Embry-Riddle needed to get their foot on the gas and get some traction going, going into the second half of the season. And they did what they needed to do in the first period. So, you know, I'm curious to see if, if Bob Joyce is going to have them sit back a little bit and play more passive, more just play like a, a more defensive type of game, or if he's going to have them keep their foot on the gas pedal and keep running these guys over because they got to play them tomorrow so you know I, I'm Miami already is playing pretty passive they're you know they're they're running a one two four check and mostly a collapsing type of defensive zone so you know it's it's really a toss-up with what you know they might change halfway through the period not really sure yet but the most important thing is they got to play you know smart hockey and not try to be too individual, too fancy, and get bad habits. This is where bad habits can form. Saturday, November 16th was the last time University of Miami played. That was a 5-2 loss to the University of South Florida. The Bulls got the better of them in a two-game set. Miami's last win was all the way back on October 25th, seven games ago, a 13-4 stomping against Lynn University. So Miami knows how to put the puck in the back of the net as this icing is called against Embry-Riddle. They have been outscored 96 to 35 throughout the season, the Hurricanes have, but again, 13 goals against Lynn University. Not the most stellar of teams, but on a good night, they can put up some good numbers. But right now, Embry-Riddle coming in with a five nothing lead. Here in the second 20 minutes of play. Embry-Riddle moving left to right across the ice surface in their home white uniforms. And in that left to right direction comes Alex Fowler on the right wing wall. Centering pass to Miller. A backhander gets knocked away by Johnny Amello. Good defensive effort from the Hurricane defender. That was really good. And, you know, it was, wow. Backhand toe drag. Another toe drag from Jack Boken. And I don't know what's going on. Now Brantley Miller was tied up with Johnny Amello on the far side corner. I believe both, both players yeah. are going. It's going to take both of them. But I don't... And Tell you what, that drew a reaction though when Jack Boken came in off the left wing blue line and threw a backhand toe drag to the Miami winger. Nearly knocked him on his backside. And we will skate four on four for the next pair of minutes. 9.14 remaining in period two. And everyone was kind of frozen because, yeah, he made the nice move, but it was almost like it was so good, it looked like the Miami defenseman just stopped. And so everybody else stopped because it was such an effortless move. And then you had what was going on in the corner, and I think that also threw everybody's attention off. So. Four on four, this is really an advantage for Embry-Riddle to try to get Miami spread out. The shot gets through, and it's sent all the way up to the blue line and out as Hawtaw dumps it in on the delayed offside, standing his man up, and that one deflects off of Hawtaw. Not sure if the Miami defenders even know it's a four on four and not a penalty kill. That's two times they've tried to clear the puck all the way down. But as you mentioned, advantage Embry-Riddle with their speed and fresh legs. We did have a longer intermission than normal here with Greek night. We had some intermission festivities with sorority and fraternity leaders of each kind taking shots from center ice at an open net and an open mini net. So that gave Miami a little bit of an advantage as well, getting their legs back as they only have three skaters eligible for a line change on the bench. Going back to that 13 to four win that Miami had back seven games ago, Colin Fitz was the goaltender that played in that game. So he does come in with a one and six record, Colin Fitz does. And with 21 goals against, or excuse me, 21 shots against, five goals against, he's made some pretty spectacular saves, especially with his left-handed glove. But the onslaught just keeps coming from the Eagles. And, you know, he has an 
840 goes against average and watching the team I don't know if that's necessarily representative of him as a goalie at least three of the goals tonight he does not hasn't had a chance on so I mean look at Adam Latart's two goals you, you got to account those on the defender as a breakaway for Miami comes back the other way Ryan Saunders shoots and a pad save by Minervini and now a penalty is going to come to Noah Austin Austin took down Saunders after he took the shot. Minervini with a humongous right pad save. And so Miami will have a four on three man advantage for 35 seconds. And then about a minute and 25 seconds of five on four power play time. And Noah Austin's out there. He's the last guy back and it was either uh, it's Saunders or Campbell, but he, actually showed a little bit of explosiveness on that play and he tried to go five hole and Max did a good job closing it up but it, it was an unnecessary penalty he gave him a little push in the corner after he had taken the shot just just skate away and go back the other way with momentum on your side so you know, four on three this is going to open things up a lot so you see how Miami will play this power play with a short bench and the Eagles throw it up off the AC unit and we'll have a face-off on the far side circle. Embry Riddle will not be allowed to make a line change. And this goes back to the first period, what I was stumbling on in that first period. Good penalties versus bad penalties if there is a good time to take a good penalty. For Noah Austin, a good penalty would have been if he took down Saunders before he took the shot, not drawing a penalty shot against Minervini, but stopping that scoring opportunity. That couple of seconds where he waited to shove down Saunders after he took the shot, that's where the good penalty side of things went away, and it became an unnecessary poor penalty to take, as now we are back to five on four power play time for Miami. But the Eagles are success successful in clearing it out, and a two on one, Latart can't get it into the middle for Kaufman, and the Hurricanes come back. Ryan Knapp caught flat-footed. Minervini thought about coming out, luckily, he stayed in the crease, and Wyatt Edner got it out of the zone. Slap shot routinely handled by the right leg of Fitz, and the rebound corralled on the far side by a pair of green jerseys. Stretch pass comes in for Will Redding. Redding left it up at the blue line. A one-timer gets blocked in front. Rebound is there on the near side, and it's skated out by Turner Kaufman, but not out. Got to dump it down. Can't be selfish and try to skate it. Up at the blue line, a shot blocker saved by Minervini. He's knocked down on the play. That's going to be a goaltender interference penalty. And the chippiness resumes. So that will be the end of Miami's first power play of the second period. They will drop to 0-2. And, and David Campbell will be the hurricane to sit for goaltender interference which from up here, yes, Minervini got bumped into, but he kind of sold it a little bit to get that call. All he, goalies do that. Goalies are weird like that. He, he definitely got shoved into a little bit of a stumble. Luckily though, and again, back to good and bad penalties, good composure from the Embry-Riddle defenders. A lot of times in chippy games, especially the past couple of seasons, Bob Joyce hasn't necessarily been able to corral his defenders and keep his defenders from absolutely obliterating that offensive player who ran over their goaltender. Good composure from the Embry-Riddle defenders to not take a retaliation penalty after running over Minervini. And you talk about good penalties. If somebody rams your goalie, it's an okay penalty to knock the guy down on his rear end. And those are usually the ones that you'll kill off for your team. Boken gets around a defender, tries to stuff it on the near side. Couldn't find a hole, and now we're back to not full and even strength, but Embry-Riddle is back to full strength, and this one will be cleared all the way down, where Minervini will leave it on the far side corner for David Lytle. To get it done on the power play. Lytle, stutter stepping through center ice, has a skating lane down the left wing wall. All the way around to the near side corner. Has Boken at the blue line. He'll walk into the middle, far side for Bridges. He fans on the shot, has his stick tied up behind him. It was in the midsection of Peter Girl, not enough for a holding penalty, and now Colin Bridges nearly taking a slashing penalty, gets away from the official. Now it, it's more on the, it's, it's that weird 
when you're halfway through the follow through on your shot and your stick is in your midsection, it kind of got caught. And now here's another breakaway for Miami. It's Ryan Saunders again. Saunders moving right to left. Backhander save, Minervini. Rebound goes over the backside of the netminder and stays out. I'm surprised he tried to go five hole both times on his breakaways. Boken takes the shot, rebound is there, but it's cleared out by Miami. And even on the penalty kill, they're looking for that stretch play. And now icing is called by the That's referees. Not. They're gonna bring that back out to center ice as Miami's still oh, on the penalty kill. No. Faceoff will come out to center ice. A rule change from a couple of years ago. Typically an icing that was not supposed to be called would go all the way back into the offending zone. But it comes back out to the neutral zone now with 14.35 left in period two. Still 20 seconds of Embry-Riddle power play time. They are 0 for 2 on the night. And Miami, you know, they kind of complained about it, kind of didn't. I think they're okay with it because it's just a little bit more of a break for their legs. Now a long dump in goes into the glove hand of Colin Fitz, and with Fowler coming in with light pressure, Fitz did not want to drop that puck, and now he's going to get a little talking to from the referee. And if I'm Colin Fitz, I'm telling the F the referee that I'm not dropping that puck for anything. I've got three guys on the yeah, bench. Well, I want, want I want a whistle. I want a face off. I want as much rest for my players as possible. But the referees nowadays, you want as much puck movement as possible. So the referee telling Fitz to play the puck. Colin Fitz is saying, back off. I'm not dropping the puck for anything. As Hata at the blue line. Sends it for Miller. His shot into the midsection and the rebound will not be covered up. It goes below the goal line. And Embry-Riddle is now 0 for 1 on their power play chances in the second period as we're back to full and even strength. 14 minutes left in period two. A 5-0 lead for Embry-Riddle. They have possession in the attacking zone. Hata off the outside of the post on the far side as Ryan Marks may have gotten a piece of it as he was, as he was falling down in front of the net. Hata one-timer screaming on the ice and it goes wide of the net. Remy Hata was pretty excited that he got his first goal. I was talking to him at the intermission. He wants more. And he's got the shot to get it done as Bryce Corner sent this one into the glove hand of Colin Fitz. As Fitz and Corner run into each other and Embry-Riddle is giving Colin Fitz a few fits. He was throwing the blocker around a couple of times in the first period and giving a, a bump to Bryce Corner as he skated by. So Fitz is a goaltender that's easily rattled and Embry-Riddle is going to have to stand in front of him, take a little bit of abuse, but a 5-0 lead is not exactly, yes, it, at this point in the game, no, it's not going to be a secure lead, but five goals is a little scary because Embry-Riddle can get a little too comfortable as a save was made by Minervini on a backhand shot from the right wing wall. Got to play to the final buzzer every game. Will Redding, centering pass and a one-timer gets deflected straight up in the air, and Alec Bishkoff. Has a skating lane on the right wing, over the blue line. Doesn't drop it to Silcox, hangs onto it in the corner. Bishkoff up to the blue line. Ebner, a one-timer, goes off the outside of the net. And stolen away by the Hurricanes. Uh -oh, they rim it up Silcox. the near side wall. Gotta relax. Silcox skates away and Knapp can't get a shot off. Silcox battling in front as this one gets deflected over the glass. And we'll see if Miami's allowed to make a line change. It looks like they will. 12.45 left in period two. No goals here in period number two. Just the 5 nothing lead that Embry-Riddle brought with him in the, from the first 20 minutes. Well, I think Miami has got a little more jump in their step this period than last period. And I think it's been evident with shot totals and pace of play, it's been more back and forth. Miami has certainly climbed the shot category as a shot left on the far side, big pad save from Colin Fitz as UCAC was knocking on the door. Latart's at the point, he wants it. Latart has it, takes the slap shot, it's blocked in front and it's cleared all the way down. This will be an icing call against Miami. And you can see the coaching staff for Miami on the visitors bench. They're not wanting their, their players to get in a foot race all the way down the ice when they're not allowed to make a line change. And it's smart. And they're playing, like I talked about earlier with the collapsing 
defense there. It's almost like a power play. Ooh. Three on none in front. Glove saved by Colin Fitz. Adam Letart looking for the hat trick goal on the near side. Gathers the rebound but couldn't put the one-timer home. UCX bodied into the wall. Yields possession to Letart. Knocked away from him and Noah Austin gives chase. Cycles back down low for Letart. Centering pass looking for UCX. Taken away by the Hurricanes. That was a 3 on 0 in front of the net. I don't know how he made that save. Jack Boken down the left wing. The right hand shot. Saucer pass near side for UCX. It went off of his backhand, but he couldn't get a shot off. And this one sent straight up into the netting and out of play. Miami not allowed to make a line change as it was not deflected and did not hit the glass. Well, they're letting him change. They're, oh no, the other official just sent him back. It's a benefit of the doubt, you've only got eight skaters to travel with you. Jack Bo Boken faked that shot and turned it into a saucer pass in one motion. Faked me out. <laughs> Adrian Deborah tried to look at the blue line. Instead, it went down low into the corner for Kaufman. 11.24 left in period two. Now to Bryce corner at the blue line. Sends it back down low for Adrian Deborah. It was in his feet intentionally for a one-timer, but too far in front. Kaufman left it for corner. Good cycle by the Eagles. Down low for Deborah. With one hand, he corrals it off the boards, rims it around to the far blue line. Hawtaw cannot keep it alive. And now wow. Minervini, all the way up to the top of the circles, takes down a Hurricane player. Referees are going to say incidental contact as a shot goes into the glove uh -oh, hand of Fitz. There he... And now David Lytle. I don't know. I... David Lytle dangerously in front, motioning and egging on the Hurricane defender. Not, not enough for a penalty. Max Minervini took a little bit of a shot as he came out, but the referee calls incidental contact. No one gets a penalty on any of the plays that we just saw, but we have a face-off in the Miami defensive zone. 10.53 left in period two. Hurricanes win the face-off to the near side wall. All the way down the ice and will not make it to the goal line is Wyatt Ebner stopped it before it reached the goal line. Ebner gets it up to Marks. Marks into the slot. Centering pass off a deflection. It's sticked away by Colin Fitz to the corner. Brantley Miller down low. Saucer pass up to the blue line, but no one is home. Marks the intended target, but it bounced over his stick. Through the stick of Brantley Miller and the Hurricanes bring it right back and dump it in on goal where Minervini will leave it for Ebner. Ebner out the near side of his net. Looks in the center for Fowler. Good stretch pass, brings a two on three. Ebner going to the net with Miller. Shot, rebound is there, and a backhander deflects to the far corner. <coughs> and now this will be called, I believe, a hand pass. Nets off two. If it is because of the net, the faceoff will stay in the attacking zone. If it's a hand pass, it'll come out to the neutral zone. All of this halfway through period number two, 10.03 left in the second frame. Still looking for a first goal of period number two. If Miami pops one in the back of the net, they've had two or three breakaway chances. Miami is not out of this game yet, and the Eagles need to pop a couple more in here. And they had a two on oh almost, and Max came out and it took one of the players out, but you know, you're. You're right, they, it's been an equal period and they need to play a little more responsible defensively. I think they're getting a little too laid back. <coughs> Colin Bridges from the blue line comes down to the half wall to dump it below the goal line for Alec Bishkoff. Cycles away from pressure. Excuse me, that was Melcheski who left it for Bishkoff. And it gets deflected up for Michael D'Antonio. Toe nice drag by move. Colin Bridges. At the red line, he dumps it in on the delayed offside. Silcox touches up and gives four check pressure. Finishing his check, kept alive by Boken at the blue line. Boken, toe drag, backhand shot was stymied in the low slot. And it's Ooh. loose there for a pitch fork from Melcheski. He just nine ironed it over the net into the big net. 9-19 left in period number two. Still a 5-0 lead for Embry-Riddle as Melcheski was looking for his second <coughs> of the season. It's good to see that fourth line getting some chance chances in the offensive zone. I mean, they did score the first goal. That was. It's good to see that. It, it's going to be 
good for their confidence that they're getting these chances and, and the ice time as well. 9-10 left in period two. Adam Latart looking for the hat trick, sends it through the crease for Kyle Usiak, but again, just couldn't get that one-timer to go off the twig. Noah Austin cycling away from pressure, sends it back down low looking for Usiak. Bodies his man into the boards. Latart comes in for support to steal it away. Up for Bridges at the blue line. Wide open on the far side is Boken. He'll take a shot into the midsection and covered up with no rebound by Colin Fitz. 8.48 left in period two. And the reason that Boken was so wide open at the point is because Fitz lost his stick. So D'Antonio actually went into the corner and left his man at the point to try to get him his stick. And then instead of picking it up with his glove, he was trying to slide it with his stick and keep his head up. And I think it actually took more time for him to do that than just grab it and give it to him. Excellent hand-eye coordination from Colin Fitz. A backhand shot from Latart with a rebound high up in the air. Looked like it was going to pop down in the net. And instead Fitz with the paddle above the crossbar sent it to the near side corner. Now UCAC, his shot goes well wide of the far side post as he was cycling up to the high slot. Latart looking for a centering pass again. Deflected down low to the near side corner for Austin. Austin has corner at the blue line and finds him. Walks into the top of the circle, back far side. Austin takes a shot, and it's wide of the near side post on a deflection. Latart up top for corner again. Eagles doing a good job of using their defenseman at the point. Usiak for Hata. His shot loose there in the crease. Rebound sent up to the blue line, but not out. Corner, good patience. Has Hata on the far side. Top of the circle, shot. Gets through, rebound is there. Adam the Latart gets the hat trick. 6 nothing Eagles. I think Ryan Travers put it in his own net as well. Latart got the shot off, and Ryan Travers had a chance to clear that puck out. And on his initial motion to get the puck, he actually knocked it in the net even more. And that's awesome to see Adam get his hat trick. It's four goals on the season for him now. Adam Latart had one goal, two assists for three points coming into tonight. He just doubled his point total in the span of 32 minutes of play. Great for the little diesel engine that could. Exactly. You talk about the points being open, and that's part of that collapsing defense that Miami is playing with a short bench. There's really not that much trap, or not that many shots, secondary shots that are getting through because the front of Venna is clogged up. Latart was finally able to get one, but you know they spent. Wow! Look at that by Kaufman. Turner Kaufman nearly had a highlight reel goal, but he couldn't get a handle on it after the seventh toe drag, and a delayed offsides Offside. will be touched up by the Hurricanes on the stick of Keith Asplin. But the the collapsing defense is it'll take away those second and third chance in front of the net. And how many times did they have the puck in the zone and they're getting shots, but they, there was nothing on the rebound. Finally, they got it because they did a good job keeping pressure, eventually tired them out. But expect the points to be open the whole rest of the game. And the Eagles have done a good job of recognizing that. It allows them to keep the puck in the zone for a little bit longer. Deborah can't keep it in the attacking zone. So Ryan Knapp has to dump it in on the delayed offsides and Lytle will give chase after touching up. Asplin turns it over. Deborah with a shot right into the catching mitt of Colin Fitz. 7.09 left in period two. Now a 6 0 lead for Embry Riddle. Shots 35 19 in favor of the home team as well. And the, the period has finally started to sway in Embry Riddle's direction after a pretty back and forth first 10 minutes. And, you know, it was exciting. And you know, you see teams with short benches come into, and as a player, you're happy that you have a game to play, but, you know, if you're up 6 7 nothing, sometimes you just want a competitive game, and sometimes those plays will also keep you on edge a little bit and keep your mental state, you know, in game mode and not it's a Sunday skate mode after you go up five or six goals. Miami with a chance to clear. They are successful, but Wyatt Ebner sends it right back where it came from. Delayed offsides in the top line for Ember Riddle gives chase. Long stretch passes deflected before the center ice red line, so this will be an icing against Miami. They will not be allowed to make a line change. 6.28 left in period two. Shots were 21-10 coming into the period. 
Miami's got nine shots. Free Riddle with 14, a little more equal than the first. But I think Miami is starting to run out of gas. And it's been a while since either team has had a power play opportunity. That led to, Miami to Miami's ability to get some sort of momentum and pressure. They had great penalty kill and some good power play possession as well. But on five on five, it's been all Embry-Riddle up and down all four lines. 6.06 left in period two. Turnaround shot from Silcox, didn't go. Now Bridges from his blue line position. Up to the blue line. Has Jack Boken. Boken near side. Wanting to say Daniel Sakala because that's Sakala's number out there, but that's Billy Callahan leaving it for Silcox. Silcox looking for a wrap around on the far side. Off the outside of the net. Lytle is there, and it goes through the crease to the near side. Silcox with speed gets it to the near side corner under possession. Up to the blue line for Boken. Boken stutter stepping back into the corner for Silcox. A backhand centering pass. Shot they score. And Malczewski. Ben Malczewski, his second goal of the season. And Matt Silcox picks up an assist, his second assist of the season. 5.28 left in period two. It's a 7-0 lead for the Eagles. That's the second pass by Silcox this game that has been right on the money that leads to a goal. And this, that, that fourth line has been out there for three goals. That's, that's great to see. That's just, it's going to build confidence in everybody on the team. And I think it's good for team morale down the stretch. This one stays in play. Usiak going to the net with Noah Austin. Usiak looking for a one-timer again. He just can't get a one-timer to go. In front, Latart looking for number four. Near side, and it's Bryce Corner with a one-timer, and it's an 8-0 lead for Embry-Riddle. What a pass by Adam Latart. He's in the slot. I'm thinking he's trying for four, and next thing I know, Bryce Corner's wide open on the back door. 5-10 left in period number two. And all of a sudden the floodgates have opened here in the second period of play. For the first half of this second period, we had no goal scoring at all and all of a sudden Embry-Riddle pops in a trio. Timeout Miami. He's just kidding. He's telling everybody to sit on the bench. And at this point, Miami needs it. They played 35 minutes of hockey with just eight players. And, and it's easy to be super negative about a team that's 1 in 10 on the season, eight skaters and one goalie traveling. But you've got Colin Fitz, who's quite honestly playing a heck of a game, already 40 shots on goal, 38, excuse me, with still five minutes left in the second period. Yes, it's eight goals against, but there's only two or three that I would credit against him that are his fault. This this Miami team is showing zero quit in all fight. And that's what you want from a team, regardless of who you're playing against and what team you cheer for. They're out there and they're fighting. And that's, that's what I like to see as as a fan, as a member of the club, it's competitive, and that's really what matters the most. And I give credit to the eight guys that traveled out here. I mean, it's a it's at least a four-hour drive up from Fort Lauderdale. They cut their break short, and they came up here for the weekend to play a game with against a full, fully stacked Ember Riddle team. I give them full props. We've still got four periods of hockey left this weekend. Both of these teams will play back here at the Daytona Ice Arena tomorrow at 4.30 in the afternoon. There's We've still got five minutes and ten seconds left in period two and a whole another 20 minutes to go of period number three. And everyone went down to Max Minervini after that timeout, and I'm wondering if you know, maybe they're telling them to just play the puck on all the icings or... Hey, what he doesn't need the the words from his teammates for something like that. We saw him come out and challenge a two on zero yeah. w without anyone telling him to. I, I don't think he needs anyone telling him to play the puck anymore. 
He is the biggest goaltender Embry-Riddle has in stature as this face-off shot goes off the outside of the net for the Eagles. And Embry-Riddle sets up in the attacking zone. Usiak lost the handle on it, and Miami has a skating lane out of the zone. At the red line, they'll dump it in. Minervini stays in his net, as these Daytona boards can do anything to that puck, especially on that end of the ice. Usiak with a centering pass, finds Latart. Noah Austin cutting through the center of the ice with his stick high in the air. And that's not how you catch a centering breakout pass. Just the simple little things like that, that as you mentioned, when you start getting five, six, seven, eight, nothing, it becomes less of a conference tight game and more of a, a Friday night public skate. Noah Austin just skating through the high slot with his stick in the air, not even ready for a breakout pass. You still have to be ready. The issue with with these types of games early in a in the semester is yes, you're get, you're coming out and you're scoring lots of goals and your confidence is high, but you could also lose that work ethic mentality that you need to finish off the season and it's important that they still come out on their toes and and play hard. Four on one developing for Miami in the slot. Shot they score. A big shot from Johnny Amello beats the blocker hand of Max Minervini, and it's now an 8-1 deficit for Miami. And it's the simple little things. The defender for Embry-Riddle, I didn't catch who it was, made a poor step up at the blue line, and all three forwards for Embry-Riddle got caught down low. It was a four on one and a half. The one defenseman got back, but it was still a three on one, and the shot was a beautiful one that beat the blocker hand of Minervini. You're exactly right. So little things should not be given up a four on one in any game you play. It was a good shot. Not much of a chance for Max on that one. He's made his fair share of good saves already. And as I mentioned earlier, Miami is getting their chances. That was their 20th shot on goal. So while it is an eight to one lead for Embry Riddle, they're giving up chances. We've already seen a couple of breakaways here in this period and a four and three on one that the Hurricanes were able to capitalize on. This one goes through the air, gloved down by David Campbell, and he comes back on a three on two. All three Eagles forwards are just coasting They're in coasting the neutral back. zone. And I don't think Bob Joyce is gonna be too happy about that. I'll talk to him at the intermission and see what he thinks, but you know, even again, they're not stopping on the puck. They're just skating circles, and they take a penalty. And I believe it's going to be Adrian Devra who gets a tripping penalty. He missed his hit as he was headhunting at the blue line. Instead, clipped the leg of the Hurricane defender and gets a tripping penalty out of it. Lackadaisical past couple of minutes for Embry-Riddle. I think there's going to be a sharp change of pace here at the the next couple of minutes because Bob Joyce is going to say something and if it's not going to be Bob Joyce it's going to be Anthony Galante he's usually the one that has the strongest voice on the bench if something needs to be said he's saying it Ryan Saunders comes in down the right wing wall Jack Boken sends his man into the boards and it's rimmed around the near side to the blue line kept in by Keith Asplund the Miami captain sends it into the half wall, back down low for Saunders. Saunders behind the net, sets up shot, comes up to the near side for Campbell. Campbell back, back down low for Saunders. Saunders centering pass, looking for Amello, looking for his second of the night. Amello up to the blue line, near side for Asplund. Asplund stops up at the half wall, comes up to the blue line, back far side for Amello. Amello near side, half wall for Campbell. Good puck movement from the Hurricanes. Up top, Asplund, near side again for Campbell. Campbell into the high slot, takes a shot blocked in front by Colin Bridges, I believe, thrown off the short glass out into the neutral zone, and the Hurricanes come back in a quick counterattack. Centering pass and a failed toe drag allows Bishkoff to skate it up to the red line and leaves it for Boken. Jack Boken, shorthanded, one on three, fails on a toe drag, and the Hurricanes come back with 45 seconds left on their power play. Malcheski lost the handle, knocked out of midair by Boken, and he will settle a bouncing puck down for Bridges. Bridges cannot clear it out on the backhand, 
Second effort fails again. And one handed out to the neutral zone finally for the Eagles. It was a good puck movement by Miami, but it was all on the outside. And Colin Bridges specifically in front of the net was boxing his man out. The kill Boken lost the handle and looked like he gave up on the play. It was in his feet. He's been out there for this entire penalty kill. Hurricanes come back as we're back to five on five play. A one timer in front. Ow. Minervini bails out his team with a shoulder save. Ryan Saunders in the high slot. Wow, Jack backhander over the creek over the net, right through the crease. Eagles are on their heels right now as Miami is swarming, but they are dead tired at the end of their power play. And there's some Pretty good talent on this Miami team, 2 on one Marks takes a shot, no rebound is given up as it goes into the midsection of Colin Fitz. There's lots of talent on this Miami team and we saw glimpses of it there. I mean, you can't sleep on a team. It's still, a, it's, it's an SCHC game. And the second you lay back, they're gonna come right on top of you and they did. They get the goal, they get the power play, they're dancing around three guys. Saunders just walked around three guys and and almost put the backhand home. It's You still got to play. Especially for that power play, but a little bit before as this one gets deflected up into the netting and out of play for a faceoff at center ice. 27 seconds left in period two. For the last five minutes of this period, it's looked like Embry-Riddle's the team that's had eight skaters with them. And it's been lethargic. I mean. Final half minute of play in period two as this one gets through Bryce Corner, but he's able to get back on the defensive side of the puck. Takes a hit, getting it to the neutral zone. And Brantley Miller finishes his check on Will Redding as Ryan Marks comes back the other direction. Marks looking for a centering pass, can't find it as Fowler was knocked down. One-timer by Hawtaw is blocked in front, goes to the far corner. Two seconds left in the period, and that will be the end of the second frame as Brantley Miller has words with Michael D'Antonio. They will skate away and head into the locker room, but not before Remy Hawtaw gets the last word in the exchange. Well, Embry Riddle winning that period three to one, and will go into the locker room leading by a score of eight to one here at the end of two periods of play. They still need to be better. Got a little too relaxed at the end. Doesn't matter how many players are on the other side of the ice. Doesn't matter how many players are on the bench for the other team. If you don't play a full 60 minutes, it will bite you in the backside. Shots 39-21 in favor of Embry-Riddle still. Minervini giving up his first goal of the semester. We will be back for the start of period number two here shortly on the Embry-Riddle Eagles broadcast network.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for period number three between the visiting Miami Hurricanes and the hometown Embry-Riddle Eagles. Eagles come in with an 8-1 to one lead, but it did not come without some bumps in the road at the end of that second period. Nick Gimble alongside Jordan Shepard here for tonight's ACHA Division Three action, SCHC Conference play. And Jordan, what did Bob Joyce have to say about the ending of that second period? You know what? I missed it. And then I went to go talk to him and he was gone. He was running towards the frat part, or uh, crowd. So I actually couldn't find him, but I was talking to um, Alex Fowler at the intermission and he, you know, the, the mood in the locker room was pretty upbeat. You know, it wasn't necessarily tense. They still felt pretty confident with how they played, but they, they want to, there's a little bit more. They want to get a little bit more out of this period. Brantley Miller brings it into the attacking zone, rising shot into the face mask, and it's gloved down by Colin Fitz. Hurricanes in their road green uniforms, orange and white trim moving left to right across the ice surface. Embry-Riddle in their home white uniforms. Max Minervini remains in the net for Embry-Riddle in their home white uniforms, moving in the opposite direction, right to left, gold and blue trim on the jersey and socks. Colin Bridges on the backhand, sends it down low for Brantley Miller in the corner. Miller evades a check, goes behind the net, shoves his wow. knee down to the ice. That was Johnny Amello who got the backside of Brantley Miller. Ryan Marks, the captain on a fresh sheet of ice, sends it down low, takes a high hit, actually moved his face mask up, and a two-on-one developing for the Hurricanes, and a toe drag from Colin Bridges, and a good defensive step up thwarts that two-on-one. You know, it was the right play, but you know, just get the puck deep. You don't need to toe drag at the blue line if you have two guys going the other way. UCF unable to keep it in the attacking zone on the first attempt, and second effort by Miami gets it under possession in their own slot for Keith Asplund. Stretch pass is deflected, and that will allow Redding to set up behind the net. Looking for a centering pass. He's a little too patient with it. He had a centering pass. Instead, stolen away in oh, a shot wow. they score. A beautiful shot from David Campbell. This time it's a it's a corner picker over the glove hand of Minervini. And now it's an 8-2 deficit. And that was funny. Johnny Amello again, I believe. It's funny you say the, the centering pass was taken away and then another one opened right up after that. And Remy Atta is screening Minervini. He can't see it. Perfect shot. And you know, Ember Riddle was too stationary in the defensive zone. Let that middle of the ice open up a little bit too much. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is Johnny Amello's second goal of the night. And Amello will have it off the far side boards, intercepted by Bryce Corner. And as we mentioned earlier, Miami is not just going to roll over and die, but UCF comes back in, fails on the toe drag, and Adam Letarte, who already has a hat trick in tonight's match, sends it far side off the boards for Bryce Corner. Glove down by Letarte. Ducks under a check, but loses possession. UCAT comes in for support. Dumps it behind the net. And Amello will gather it on the far side corner. Doesn't send it up the wall. Instead, maintains possession back below the goal line. Stops up away from UCAT, who's still harassing him from behind. Taking some more stick work, and Haw Toss sends it back where it came from on the dump in. Goes in on goal, and Colin Fitz leaves it behind the net. Intercepted by Remy Hata again, but he can't keep it alive in the attacking zone. 17-33 left in period, number three, an 8-2 deficit for the Hurricanes, but they have a 1-0 lead in goals in the period. Colin Fitz out of his net to steer it to the far side boards after he wrapped it around. Through the air, it is knocked down by Ryan Knapp and sends it near side in his own zone for Wyatt Ebner. Stretch pass is not deflected by Adrian Deborah, the officials say. So an icing call against the Eagles with 17-12 left in period three. Well, it's been a uh, different start to the period than anticipated. But and like you said, Miami's not just going to roll over and die. They're going to they're going to play tough all the way to the very end. So. It's, it's been pretty sloppy play as of right now, and it seems more like they're just trying to get the game over with rather than finish it all the way to the finish line. 
Kaufman leaves it for Deborah. He takes a shot. Blocker save is made by Fitz on a three on two. Now a two on two back on the transition for the Hurricanes. Ryan Saunders trying to cut to the middle and he's taken down by Deborah. Ryan Knapp, far side for Lytle. Goes off of his backhand. And the Hurricanes send it off the wall but not out. Kaufman back down low looking for Lytle. Finds him on the far side corner below the goal line. Cycles up to the half wall. Gets up to the high slot. Lytle takes a shot and it was a riser over the crossbar. Settles on the back of the net and it pops out for a play on the near side half wall by Knapp. The right-handed shot can't peel it off the wall so he has to kick it down low into the corner. And the Eagles give absolutely no forecheck and pressure and they allow the Hurricanes yeah. to get out to neutral ice. What are you doing? You're standing around. You're just waiting for something to happen. Go out there and make it happen. And icing is waved off as the Eagles were making the line change. It went right through their changing players. So play continues in the Eagles' defensive zone. They get it out to neutral ice as Lytle comes back over the blue line, working one on four as he didn't get a lot of support from Silcox, who was standing right next to him. Now again, the Eagles just giving up the neutral zone. <coughs> And the Hurricanes dump it far side corner through Colin Bridges. He pitchforks it through the air into the neutral zone. And it's settled down by Peter Gurl. Left on for David Campbell. Stutter stepping around. Jack Boken. Left it at the blue line. And Will Redding sends it back down low. Up to the, up to the blue line for Amello. His shot deflected through the pads of Minervini. But he got enough on it to send it to the far corner. And again, lazy in front of the net. The Eagles are. Jack Boken's going to box him out there. He's standing right beside him, not moving. Left at the blue line. Amello again. He lost the handle on it. And Silcox is tripped up. No call from the officials as Bishkoff can't get it into the zone. At the blue line, he'll dump it in on a delayed offsides. And the fourth line retreats to the bench. Game's not as chippy now, but I'm telling you that they still, Brentley Miller especially, I was talking to him, they've still got a bit of a sour taste in their mouth. You know, they still want to be physical. Really going to carry it into tomorrow. Onside play nearly came out to the neutral zone. Ryan Marks cannot keep it alive. He was harassed by a pair of green jerseys. Retreats. He's the last man back. Dangerous saucer pass finds Jack Boken. Comes into the high slot. Leaves it up top for Faller. Faller, toe drag fails, and it comes out to the neutral zone. Luckily not under the stick of David Campbell, who is cherry picking behind everybody. Dumped into the near side corner. Has Johnny Amello again. He will leave it behind the net on the reverse for D'Antonio. Pata gives a shoulder to Ryan Sanders. Or excuse me, that's Ryan Saunders after he dumped it into the corner. Now Saunders can't get around Bryce corner, he leaves it for Brantley Miller trying to get around a defenseman. He takes a rising shot, can't hit the net. He's got a hard shot. Marks wow. with a toe drag, gets it into the slot, sends it down low for Faller. Waiting for a passing lane to open up. Sends it back down low for Miller on the cycle. Miller working one on one. Marks doesn't come in for too much support until Miller sends it to the far side corner. Now Marks is there down low for that reverse play. Back for Miller on the far corner. Two on two battle below the goal line. Comes up to the blue line for corner. And it goes uh -oh. through Bryce corner and a one on one. Ryan Saunders waiting for help from Girl. Saunders takes a shot into the midsection. Rebound Good is save. handled by Minervini. As Minervini is looking around wondering why he's having Odd man rushes and breakaways happening in a lackadaisical third period for Embry-Riddle with 13-17 remaining. And that toe drag by Ryan Marks was awesome, but Alex Fowler and Brantley Miller are standing in the corner. One of them has to go to the net. So Marks will pass it down. One of them stands there. Marks goes to the net, but there's three Miami guys. There's nobody in front of the net to push any of the traffic around and just kind of stationary in the play state in the corner. A little bit of gamesmanship from Miami as they've got the short bench will sound like a broken record saying that again, but a late change from Peter Gurl coming off the bench, giving his team just that extra couple of seconds of breathing time. And Adam Letarte steals it away. The hardest working player on the ice again tonight. Centering pass looking for Austin, got deflected away. And Letarte forces his man out, steals the puck away. Centering pass for Austin, he can't get the shot off. Adam Letarte, again, the hardest working player on the ice up and down the lineup, making chances happen out of nothing. Wyatt Ebner sends it up the far side for Usiak, who rims it off the body of the referee, 
who's just sitting there wondering why Usiak is trying to rim it back behind. So now Miami in their own zone. Keith Asplund, he'll send it to the far side for Amelo to send it up the wall, and Miami comes back in the attacking zone. Campbell, a shot almost fooled Minervini. Looked like it may have gotten a deflection. Minervini didn't even get a chance to go down to his butterfly before he caught it off his right shoulder. Game's starting to slow down a little bit. It's pretty stable with uh, back and forth play, not much happening, but still, still 12 minutes left. And with the game losing pace, I got to feel that plays into Miami's favor. The, the less speed that Embry Riddle is going to give on a four check and on an odd man break, the more Miami is able to sit back, conserve a little bit of energy, corral themselves in that 1 2 2 you mentioned earlier. And, and Bob Joyce didn't tell him to stay back. I talked, I was, I was talking to Alex. He told him, keep going, stay on these guys. They got to play them tomorrow. Why would you let up and give them any more energy when you can take it away now? Make tomorrow's game even more in your favor in that sense. Miami having a hard time getting out of their own zone. They'll set up the breakout below the goal line. Near side for Amelo. Long stretch pass is deflected by Campbell. Play continues for Colin Bridges. He's harassed one on one. He maintains possession. Colin Bridges with nothing but time and space on a three on two down the left wing. And a good rebound control by Colin Fitz as Colin Bridges was doing everything right. Took ice. As a defenseman, you're taught to go north south, not east west. Go up and down the sheet of ice rather than moving left to right. He took the ice that Miami gave him. There wasn't necessarily a pass open, skated all the way into a three on two. And he took that shot for a pass off a rebound from that pad and instead stick to glove. Good rebound control from exactly. Colin Fitz. Exactly, and you took the words right out of my mouth. He put that right off the left toe, which is prime time to bounce into the middle of the slot. And then uh, it just he deflected into his glove perfectly. It's one of those things that goalies do that I just don't get. <clears throat> From his knees, Bryce Corner cannot maintain possession, but he gets some help from Matt Silcox, who runs into a green jersey, leaving it for Melcheski, who's got a goal tonight. And this one goes right into the logo of Colin Fitz. Again, no, no rebound is given up. And yes, he's given up eight goals against on 43 shots, but Colin Fitz has looked very solid here tonight. And you said it, 43 shots. I mean, he's, he, he's working as hard as he can. And he, the stats are, stats can be deceiving in all sports. And his goalie stats are deceiving because it, it seems like he's a lot worse goalie than he is. He's not a bad goaltender. And I'd like to see how he plays when the whole Miami team is there. Because he's shown flashes of brilliance all game. And a delayed off sides will force Henry Riddle back into the neutral zone. And you know, I'll say it again, goalie, goalies are a little bit weird. Some goalies, yeah, you, you want to have a successful season. You want to fight for that national championship title. But in, in games like this, Miami still has 23 shots on goal. But in a game like this, in a developmental standpoint, as Alex Fowler comes in looking for a stuff attempt, Ooh. backhander goes through the crease. Developmentally, Colin Fitz is gaining more and more experience. He's becoming a better goaltender in this kind of scenario as Brantley Miller sends this one through the crease. 43 shots on goal. Yes, he's given up eight, but he's learning, he's improving. He's getting double the shots that Max Minervini is on the far side of the ice than him. And a lot of goaltenders that I've talked to, yeah, you want to compete for a title, but it's nice to be able to get 40, 50 shots a and night. And you get into a groove. Even from a short-term developmental standpoint, you can get into a groove and get hot. And it's those, these types of games, if you could face 40 to 50 shots, you might start to feel the puck a little bit better, maybe at the end of this game, and then he takes it in tomorrow, and, you know, Miami could win 2-1 and get out shot 55 to 18. But he's got that groove going, and that, that's really, that's why goalies can just be so magical. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. They're voodoo. A collision back behind the play allows Wyatt Ebner to come back one on three. He fans on his shot as it went wide of the near side post. Comes back out in front for Noah Austin to battle for it, back behind the net. 
And Keith Asplund will send it off the near side boards on a deflection. Letarte was hooked on the play, he thought. No call comes from it with 8.50 left in period three. Letarte takes the shot. He's already got three goals tonight, but he's not letting up at all. As this one goes through the crease, gloved down by Usiak and sent all the way down the ice for an icing call by Miami, which is about all they can do at this point in their night. I asked Adam, I said, or I told him on, a, on the Bryce corner goal, I thought you were going to shoot that puck in the slot, and he passes him. He says, yeah, that was the only play I had. I was planning to shoot it. You know, he wants he wants more, and it's good to see he's still hungry. Regardless of the score, regardless of what point in the game it is, he's always out there hungry for everything. Bridges waiting for a lane to open oh. up. Usiak is robbed by the left skate of Keith Asplund, who went down. He had no idea Usiak was even going to take a one-time shot, and another one gets deflected off the outside of the net. Usiak has been robbed time and time again on these one-timers tonight. And another one is again. blocked in front. Kyle Usiak can't buy a goal tonight. Oh, that one goes off the outside of the net. Usiak up to the blue line for Boken. Jack walks the blue line to the center. Near side for Usiak again. 7.57 left in period three. An 8-2 lead for Embry-Riddle. Noah Austin again up to the blue line for Boken. Settles a rolling puck down. Walks down the wall. Switches with Austin. Boken centering pass. Bridges takes a shot. And it's deflected away by the stick of Fitz again. And this one's sent all the way down after Jack Boken lost the handle on it. That allows Miami to make a two-man line change. And it's sent back down the ice. Not going to be enough for an icing call as it goes on Minervini. Colin Bridges with seven and a half to go in the final frame. Up the wall for Deborah. His Ooh, centering pass man. picked off on a beautiful read by Amello. Johnny walks in. Slap good. shot and a good pad save by Minervini. And there's a shot for a rebound that we were talking about about five minutes ago. Exactly. I was thinking the exact same thing. Max did a good job controlling it, though. It didn't bounce out into the slot. It more just kind of died on impact. It was cushioned. Big Ooh. collision at the blue line. Jack Boken stands his man up, and Ryan Saunders gets demolished as he comes over the blue line. And Hawtaw finishes his check, and icing will be waved off as Minervini oh. gives a shot he to Ryan it. Saunders. He, he put he speared out his glove, so. Ryan Saunders with a, a little bit of a love tap to the glove hand of Minervini, who thought it was completely unnecessary. But Saunders trying to draw a little bit of a penalty. Not enough from Saunders for a penalty. But he's trying to get under Minervini's skin, trying to send a message for tomorrow and for the remaining 641 of tonight. Trying to maybe get one more power play, get under Minervini's skin. Cooler heads prevail. No penalties given out by the officials. 641 left in period three. And Miami keeps it alive on the faceoff win. Sent around the boards to the far side for Bryce Corner. Stretch oh. pass looking for Lytle, finds the mark, but it deflects away from him. I think Turner, Turner Kaufman thought that pass was for him and it was broke out. I think it was right on the money. Good support from Kaufman, but the Eagles can't keep it alive in the attacking zone. Kaufman gets it back. Adrian Deborah nearly offsides, and a toe drag by Kaufman gets him free below the goal line. Harassment from the stick of Keith Asplund from behind, comes up to the blue line for Hawtaw. He'll take a shot, gets through, and he scores! Remy Hawtaw, his second of the season, and a 9-2 lead for Embry-Riddle. Good job getting traffic in front of the net. David Lytle was there. Remy Hawtaw, I think it hit off the shin guard of one of the Miami players. Turner Kaufman was the one who sent that pass up to the blue line for Hawtaw. And again, Miami not just going to roll over and die. David Campbell trying to come back with a response as this one gets deflected into the Embry-Riddle bench. Faceoff will stay in the Eagles defensive zone. Blocker hand side of Minervini with just under six minutes to go in the third and final frame. Remy told me, he said, I'm going to get one more. The intermission, he told me he wants one more, and there it is. That brings his total up to two goals, five assists for seven points. And 
So again with 5.53 left in period three, a nine to two lead. Scorekeepers have not yet updated the scoreboard from eight to two, but it is in fact a seven goal lead for the home team. Long stretch pass is intercepted by Embry Riddle. They get it right back into the attacking zone. Silcox with help from Billy Callahan. They cannot keep it at the half wall, and so Miami gets it into the middle. Campbell at the red line, dumps it in. And the most recent goal scorer, Remy Hawtaw, cycles back behind his net. And he gives it up right to a green jersey. And the shot goes in Ooh. off the shoulder of Minervini, left the rebound there. Not quite sure who Hawtaw is passing to there. I think he was Peter. trying to give it to Max, and then Max didn't know, and it could go really bad really fast. Peter Gurl was standing right in front of the Embry-Riddle winger on the near side. And instead of skating with it, Remy Hawtaw threw it right into a green jersey, and it turned into a scoring chance for Miami. 5.15 left in period three. Nine to two lead for Embry-Riddle. Face-off win and a blue line shot gets deflected up into the netting. Went off the stick of Brantley Miller, so we'll have a face-off right back where we started. On the near side circle. 5.09 says the clock in the, in the third period. Embry Riddle is exactly leading the shot category two to one. 48 to 24 is the shot lead for Embry Riddle. Wyatt Ebner down the left wing. Doesn't have a passing lane in the center, so comes up to the blue line. Ryan Knapp one times it to the near side for Brantley Miller, down low for Marks. Back up at the blue line for Ebner. He'll take a shot, no one's in front of Colin Fitz. So a routine bread basket snag with 444 left in period three. Tomorrow's game is gonna be telling about both of these teams. Um, Miami's probably gonna want a little bit of revenge after today and you've seen, yeah. we've seen it in the last 20 minutes or so of hockey. And I think it's going to really depend on how Embryo comes out tomorrow. I think the mentality coming in today was more unsure of everything. And, and the dangerous part about tomorrow is there know it's going to be the same amount of guys that can't come out lightly. That's to come out with the same type of aggressive, aggressive uh, mentality that they did tonight. Jump out to a five nothing lead in the first again, and they kind of took their foot off the gas pedal in the second third period. They can't do that tomorrow. And now Ryan Marks is going to get a penalty here for digging his stick at the glove hand of Colin Fitz. Just like one of the Hurricanes players did to Max Minervini about five minutes ago that drew a crowd behind the Embry-Riddle netminder. I don't really know. I mean, maybe they're just trying to control the game, but I, I don't know. No words. In a nine to two game, you gotta with four and a half left, you gotta think that's a little bit unnecessary from both Ryan Marks. I, I get he's trying to do the whole well, you did it to my goalie, so I'm gonna do it to your goalie. A little unnecessary from Ryan Marks and Bob Joyce wanting an explanation. But in, in my opinion, no scrum came from it. It wasn't necessarily vulgar and malicious, the stick coming into the glove. I, I see both sides, but I don't see both sides. It's it's a little bit of a of an awkward it. scenario, but a five on four power play for Miami nonetheless, with four minutes remaining in period three. Both teams are 0 for three on their power play chances so far. This is Miami's fourth of the game, first of the period. 3:55 left in period three, a 9-2 lead for Embry Riddle. Miami cycling in the neutral zone. Finally, they bring it into the attacking end. Saunders has it deflected up into the netting, and the faceoff will stay in the Embry Riddle defensive zone. Crowd has thinned out a little bit here as the score has gotten farther and farther away for a seven goal differential. 49 to 24, the shot total in favor of Embry Riddle. Still a minute and a half of Eagles penalty kill time. Jack Boken working one on two, sends it to the far side for Colin Bridges. Oh, he sends wow. it all the way down. <clears throat> Latart cheating a little bit, almost got him. Colin Fitz with a nifty little stick move to get away from Adam Latart, sends a pass right on the tape. And back comes Johnny Amello. 
Lamella leaves it in the high slot. And it goes down low into the corner for Asplund. He takes a sharp angle shot. Rebound is there for Minervini to hang on. And we'll have a whistle and a face off with 3-10 left in period number three. No, Austin was grabbing a skate. Coming off the ice, I don't know if it was, he fell down, I don't know if he maybe hurt himself or just a bad edge or something like that. Sure. The expert skate sharpener, Jeffrey Gilbert, downstairs will get that all figured out before tomorrow's game if his blade is messed up. Jack Boken, shorthanded chance, gets a shot off. Rebound is left on the far side of the crease by Colin Fitz. And Boken gets it back on a shorthanded opportunity. He will just skate it all the way back out to the neutral zone. Alec Bishkoff not ready for the pass on the near side. And it, oh, here we go. He steals it back, skating down the left wing, taking ice that's given to him. It's knocked away from him. He was looking for his first goal of the season. Uh, I can see the disappointment in his face as he skates back. He really wanted that one. Minervini sent that rebound off the blocker into the netting behind him. Stops the clock with 2.29 left in period three. 11 seconds left on the, I'm not quite sure what they called on Ryan Marks. I'm not sure if it was unsportsmanlike conduct or if they or if they called it some sort of minor slashing penalty. Either way, the minor penalty to Ryan Marks only has about a, about half a dozen seconds in it as of now. As Remy Hawtaw takes all the ice given to him down the he right wing three. wall. He wants his third one. Centering pass, no one is home, and Miami comes back. Johnny Amello up top into the slot. It's deflected away. And Kaufman skates Ooh. away from the puck, thinking Hawtaw was going to win that race. Now three on one down low, and Adrian Deber gets back to seal that one away. Now a three on He's one got back. David Lytle missed him. He missed him, but icing is waved off as Lytle won the race to the dots. Lytle we'll gets possession. There was a three on one down low as well, and I think David Lytle didn't fully see it, but Adrian Deber was wide open on the back door. All of this with about 99 seconds of play as Miami comes back on a two on two. Ryan Saunders cannot get around Bryce Corner who sends it off the glass and into the netting out of play for 129 remaining in period number three. Looking forward after tomorrow, both of these two teams play tomorrow at 4.30. After that, Miami University will host a pair of games against Coastal Carolina on Friday, January 17th, and Saturday, January 18th. And Jordan, for Embry-Riddle, talk to us about what Embry-Riddle's gonna get a chance to do traveling to the Air Force Academy. So the, they are gonna play two games against the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Uh, the day, weekend starts early. They're leaving at 4.30 in the morning on Friday. And they'll play Saturday and Sunday. The team will visit the university and watch an Air Force game, the NCAA Division I hockey team play, which will be a good experience. And they'll get to meet some Embry-Riddle alumni for lunch. It's going to be a good weekend. It's busy, but it's a, a lot of the guys are excited about it. And correct me if I'm wrong, as a partial two-on-one down low happens, this is going to be the first time that Embry-Riddle's hockey team has made a trip like this, especially to Colorado Springs to, a, to an academy like Air Force. You've got an aeronautical university, of course, in Embry-Riddle. Talk about that kind of experience to visit a military academy with the Air Force. Well, I think it's going to be exciting for guys in ROTC, like Ryan Marks' Air Force. He's, I haven't talked to him about it specifically, but I can only assume that the ROTC guys are going to be thrilled to go. And... It, I've, I've actually visited the, the academy a couple times. It's world class, and it's in a way, it's it's almost like Embry Riddle can relate to the facilities and training standards that the academy has in terms of um, resources. And I think it's going to be a good experience for for the university and the team. Latart looking for four, and I believe it went off of the near side post. Colin Fitz may have gotten a piece of it on the way down. And icing will be called with 22 seconds left in period number three, a 9-2 lead for Embry-Riddle. Following that trip to Colorado Springs on January 18th and 19th, 
Embry Riddle will make the trip over to Florida Gulf Coast University on January 24th and 25th for a set of road games before hosting USF on Friday, January 31st in a home and home series where they would travel to Tampa to take on the Bulls on February 1st. So a lot of business trips here as Adam McCart gets his fourth goal of the night. So that will cap off a 10 to two victory. They will just run down the clock for the final 10 seconds or so. Much to the remaining crowd's delight, the shot total will end at 52 to 25 in favor of Embry-Riddle. And Miami, Jordan, what are they gonna have to do? What are they gonna have to think about as they hit their heads on the pillows tonight at their hotel to get themselves prepared for that 4.30 matchup tomorrow? Well, there's really only so much you can do in terms of game plan, but it's about executing. And the last 30 minutes of this game, they were very effective at limiting chances and getting their own chances. And they're gonna, I'm pretty sure that they're gonna build off of that tomorrow. I think there was a lot of maybe confusion or uncertainty about what they're, how they're gonna manage this, but I think they have it figured out and they're gonna try to use that to their advantage as much tomorrow. It's up to Embry Riddle to counteract that. They had a weaker second half of the game. It's gonna be up to Bob Joyce and the rest of the coaches to figure out a way to shut that down. Johnny Amello picking up a pair of goals for Miami. The only two goals scored for the visiting team. Four goals from Adam Latart. Remy Hawtaw gets his first and second goals as an Embry-Riddle Eagle. Capped off by Jack Boken, Noah Austin, Bryce Corner, and Ben Malcheski, who gets his second goal of the season. Neither team gets a power play goal tonight. Special teams not that much of a factor other than momentum swings for Miami to get some good pressure towards the end of the second period and at the beginning of the third period. Shots 52 to 25 in favor of Embry Riddle. For Jordan Shepard, I'm Nick Gimble. Thank you for thank you so much for joining us here on this Friday night edition of ACHA Division 3 Hockey. Embry Riddle defeats the Miami Hurricanes by a score of 10 to 2.